This is episode number 18, Make the Most Out of Life. The first step to making the most out of life is deciding what you hope to accomplish. What is it that you desire or want from life? There's no right or wrong answer to this question, so don't think that this is like a test or anything and you need to have the right answer. Um, But this is something that you should know about yourself. You should know uh, what it is that you want out of life and and what it is that you hope to accomplish as you go forward. Uh, Maybe you aspire to do satisfying work that will allow for you to add value to the world. Maybe you're looking for a fulfilling relationship that brings you happiness. Uh, Maybe you want to become fit and healthy so that you can be a positive example that your children can look up to. Maybe you're ready to eliminate the personal stress that is limiting your potential. It could be a number of things. There's no, again, there's no right or wrong answer to any of these questions, but uh, these are just examples to hopefully trigger your thoughts um, for for this episode of the podcast. Um, These following tips that I'm going to give you will help you accomplish all of these things. They will help you uh, uh, decide what it is that you want to do and identify, um, uh, what it is that you want to accomplish. And then it will help you, uh, get started on that, ba- that path so that that way you, uh, can accomplish those things. Um, the simple question that, that I think that, that I know the answer to, um, and it's kind of a rhetorical question, but for all of you that are out there watching, for all of you that are listening right now, um, are you, ready to make the most out of your life right now? And I'm pretty sure the answer to that question is yes. And if so, let's go. So the first thing is expect the most out of life. Some people will say live life with no expectations. You know, life is just kind of random and things just happen which may be true to a degree, but at the end of the day, you need to expect the most out of life, not the least, or, you know, that, that some, you know, 50% of my life is going to be bad things happen to me. 50% are going to be good. And I just need to make the best of what it is. Everything is true except for that last, or I mean, everything is, is wrong except for that last part. So you need to make the best out of life, regardless of what happens to you. So if, even if, 99% of the things that happen to you are bad and you get 1% of that is awesome. You need to make the best out of it. That's, that's what life is all about. Life is meant to be lived to the fullest. You are not inferior to any other person. No one is luckier than you. Um, their brain isn't more powerful or more advanced than yours. Every person that is living the life you want has had their fair share of setbacks they didn't, uh, the people that, that separ- are separated from, let's just say myself and the big leagues, you know, the people that are, are really out there making, you know, millions of dollars doing everything that I aspire to do is that I haven't, A, broken the mold of, um, you know, my, my old self or, or whatever you might want to call it where I'm still trying to find my way. And, you know, I've, I've obviously made steps towards that. I'm still learning. I'm still growing and I'm not where I want to be at. And and for all I know, my vision might change, which is fine for me. I'm okay. I'm 100% happy with where I am in this moment because I know it's only going to get better. However, if you look at these people, let's just say, uh, Michael Jordan, for example, because everybody know who's knows who he is. He had a a pretty significant setback in his life. Um, He went, when he was in high school, he tried to join the high school basketball team. And he was instantly rejected. Why? Because the coach said he wasn't good enough. Michael Jordan, of all people, was not good enough for the high school basketball team. One of the greatest NBA legends of all time was told he wasn't good enough. And he could have given up right there. He could have taken what the coach said at face value and said, you know what, you're right, I'm not good enough, and given up and moved on, and you could have been some accountant at a law firm. But he didn't. He knew what it is, or what it was, I should say now, that he wanted to do, and he attacked it. He made it the the forefront of his life, of his vision, and he made it happen. He didn't live in the setbacks. He wasn't like, oh, you know what? That coach is right. I'm not good enough. Even if he wasn't good enough in the moment, he made it happen going forward. He practiced. He put in the the blood, sweat, the tears. He had heart. He went 
full, like, as the saying goes, balls to the wall and made it happen. So, I mean, there's plenty of them. The Beatles, for example, were rejected from a studio label because they had, quote unquote, no future in show business. What, probably the greatest rock band to ever, I guess it would be more like a classical rock, whatever, but one of the greatest bands to ever exist was told they had no future in the industry. I mean, think about it. Another one is J.K. Rowling, or Rowling, however you pronounce it, the, the uh, author of the world-famous Harry Potter series. She was rejected multiple times from different publishing agencies f- over a year... Uh, it would be probably over like a year, year and a half of her writing books. And then she finally got after a year and a half, or let's just call it a year just to be safe, a year of being rejected left and right from publishing companies. She finally got one to say yes. And now she is, of course, a global sensation because she has these books that people love. So again, everybody, every, every one of these examples could have taken things at face value and said, you know what? I'm not good enough because you said so. I'm not good enough because Joe Bob, the publisher, said my book wasn't good enough. Just because one person says that you're not good enough doesn't mean that it's true at all. The difference between winners and losers is as simple as this. Winners keep moving forward no matter what happens in their lives. The losers will give up at the first chance that they get. And we have to admit, we've all had that loser mentality at one point or another, and that's okay if you have. I mean, if you haven't, great, that's awesome. But for me, I've had that loser mentality where I get defeated. You know, I've, when I played football in high school, there was plenty of times I was told I wasn't good enough, but I didn't give up. I played football and I made it happen. I wasn't the greatest football player that ever was, obviously, because I didn't go on to play college ball. I didn't go to the NFL, so on and so forth, but I didn't just give up. And that doesn't mean that you should either. Another step, another another tip, whatever you want to call it that you need to look at to getting the most out of life is to slow down and live your life. Life is meant to be enjoyed. And when you race through life trying to get somewhere quickly, whether it be, you know, in the literal sense, like you're, you know, racing across town to get to your appointment or, you know, it's just from day to day life. You're just you're moving quickly through every single day you end up missing many of the life experiences and your life won't seem very fulfilled. At the end of the day, you'll you'll kind of, you know, I've, I've had those days where you, you look back at the time and you wonder where the day went or, you know, you look at the clock and you're like, man, it's already five o'clock. <laughs> you know, everybody has those days, which is totally okay to have those days. It's going to happen, especially if you If you're doing something that really like makes you excited. We've had a previous episode of the podcast about this where, you know, you have a passion for something. And that passion is so strong that you forget to go to the bathroom, you forget to eat, you know, you lose track of time and, you know, one hour seem or, you know, eight hours seems like one hour because you're just so consumed with what is you're doing. But the difference is, is when you're, when you're just kind of plowing through the day, just trying to get through it and, you know, you're, you're losing track of time or whatever, you're just trying to burn the minutes. It's, it's a totally different, um, it's a totally different setup. So what you want is to exercise your patience and take a step back. Look at the beauty around you and soak it in. You know the saying, uh, uh, take the time to smell the roses. You know, if you're walking down the street and you see some roses, you know, don't like, ah, screw the roses. I'm going to keep going. Like take the time, step back and smell the roses, you know? And for some of you, especially like you're, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, a, a businessman or woman, um, business owner, whatever it might be, For some of you, that process of being in business is the roses. So enjoy the process of life. Enjoy the process of business, being an entrepreneur, being a whatever you might be, you know, if you're a a professional knitter or an author or a musician or whatever it is, the process, the learning and the the failing and the, the struggling and all that is the roses. Take the time to enjoy life because you can only live life once. Some people might argue that there's past lives and stuff, which I'm not, I'm not saying that there's not, but in this life right now, you're only going to live it once. So live it to the fullest. Remember this rules are meant to be broken. This is going to be tip number three. Why should you follow the rules without questioning their validity? That's another rhetorical question, but I mean, think about it. 
just like our, our example with, with the professional athlete Michael Jordan or the Beatles or J.K. Rowling, just because the rules are that, you know, uh, Michael Jordan might, uh, it, if, if the coach was told if they, you know, do this and don't do this and do this and don't do this, they're not good enough. You know, those might have been the rules and, and, you know, you could take those at face value, but just because those are the quote unquote rules or the way, you know, the way that it is, which I've been hearing a lot lately, that's just the way it is. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't question the validity of those rules or the way it is. You shouldn't have to, I mean, first off, but policies and procedures do have their place in business and large organizations where quality control and compliance must be considered. However, you should make a habit of questioning everything in life and finding a way to make things better. Think about it. If you had, let's just go back to the horse and buggy days and everybody thought, no joke, when the car was made, it was going to be a flop because the horse and buggy was good enough. And that was just the way that it was. But then you have Henry Ford come along and he invents the first car. And when he invents this first car, everybody said that it's not going to work. It's not going to catch on. And we're going to be in the horse and buggy days for the rest of our life because that's just the way it is. Obviously, that's not the case. Horse and buggy came and went. And now there's more, more cars on the road than there are people in the world. Think about it. There's more cars in the world than there are people. So just because the rules at the time or the way that it was at the time was that horse and buggy was the way to go doesn't mean that that's the way that it is. Henry Ford bucked the status quo. He questioned the rules and he made something happen. That's what life is all about. Think about it. Rules are meant to be broken. How else do you think progress happens in life? I'm not saying go out there and break the law and, you know, do 95 down the road just because you're like, well, the rules are meant to be broken. That's similar to like what I was saying. There's policies and procedures in place that we have to follow to survive through life and to, you know, obey the laws and things like that. But at the end of the day, if somebody says that's just the way that it is when it comes to doing what you do in your business or your industry or your life, doesn't make it so. Question them. And if there's an easier way to do it or a better way to do it or a faster, more efficient way to do it, do it that way. If there's a way that works better for you, do it that way. That's how life is. Step number four would be regret nothing in life. Simply put, living life with no regrets is the only way to live a fulfilled life. Living life with regrets will only ensure that you end up living life with a frown on your face every single day. And that's guaranteed. If you looking back at something in your life and you regret a decision that you made and you're constantly sulking and stewing in that, life will be sad. There are risks in life that will come up and that's a given. And you're going to you're going to have two choices or three or four or five etc all the way down the chain, but let's just say that you have a decision, you have two choices, one white right, one wrong. Or one has one outcome, one has outcome two. And you make a decision and it ends up being a mistake. Don't sweat it. Why? Because you can't go first. You can't go back and change it. You can't go back and make it right. I mean, you can make it right if it was something, you know, you have to go and apologize or whatever, but it's not like you can reverse life, go back and do over. So trying to stew on it and regret it and whatever isn't going to change anything. First off, Second off, life is filled with mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, all of us. Just because you don't see Bruno Mars making mistakes or um, Ellen DeGeneres making mistakes or Jim Carrey making mistakes or all these, you know, Kevin Hart, uh, Will Ferrell, you know, movie stars, Michael Jordan, J.K. Rowling, whoever, just because you don't see these people making mistakes doesn't mean that they haven't made mistakes in their careers. It's what happens in life. We all make mistakes. It's inevitable. So the idea here is to not live with regrets because A, you can't change them and B, we all do it. So the best thing that you can do is to accept your mistakes and to embrace them and use them as learning experiences to make your life better. Because that's what matters is life is about learning and growing. And if you could take those those mistakes and those hard lessons learned and use them as leverage to get you to that next win, that's what matters in life. And our last tip is simply put, you're not alone. 
You're not alone in life. You're not alone in, in what it is that you're going through. I have no doubt that you are a brilliant individual who is capable of accomplishing plenty, but your odds for success will be much greater if you harness the power of teamwork. No one has all of the answers, and anyone who thinks otherwise is cocky at best and delusional at worst. Seek a mentor who can provide you with guidance and direction. We had a previous podcast episode about this, and it was a, a pretty quick one, but find a mentor, somebody that you can look up to, somebody that can show you the way, somebody that's lived the experiences that you're going through or similar ones and can give you guidance. Because at the end of the day, if you could take somebody else's skills or traits or life experiences and learn from them without having to go through trial and error and failure and learn yourself and wasting all that time trying to do it, you're that much better off. Make a friend on a, a level playing field so you can bounce ideas back and forth. Somebody who has a similar mindset to you. Find somebody who has a like mind, somebody who has the same drive, the same eagerness to get through life and bounce ideas off of them because at the end of the day, they're going to be the best person to give you feedback because they're at the same uh, mindset. They're at the same level in their life or the same uh, you know, the level-headed person, whatever you want to call it. But if you can have a, a member of your team to bounce ideas off of, it, it makes the decisions that much easier and it know you it, it reassures you or, or that other person that you guys have each other's backs, especially if something goes wrong and you make a mistake. You guys have each other's back all the way till the end. Offer your support to a newcomer who you can be a mentor to. So not just finding a mentor, but be a mentor to somebody else. If you can find somebody, you know, let's just say that it's a coworker that you're working with or you run into somebody at a meetup or, you know, you're at a concert or, a, you know, an event, something, and you run into somebody and you, you know, you get to know them or whatever and you find out that they're going through something and you can give them guidance, be a mentor to that person. If you can allow, if that A will allow for you to grow confidence in your abilities to be a mentor and what it is that you're sharing with this person, but B, you're also going to change somebody's life and make an impact. And if you have somebody who believes in what it is that you're sharing and what it is that you're telling them and the guidance that you're giving them, and then they can redirect people to you, you know, so like for example, and, and I'm not trying to you know, turn this into me, me, me type of thing. But let's just say that I became a mentor to somebody through this podcast or whatever, and I go through and make a change um, in somebody's life. And then they want to refer somebody to my podcast because I, you know, they're like, Spencer Keefe changed my life. Maybe he could change your life too. And they get referred to me. That just means that that person obviously was so moved by what it is that I did that they were to go, they, they referred somebody to me for me to be able to make that same impact and how I can grow as well as these two other people that are now in my my team. So it's like this big uh, uh, organism that you're creating, a community, and, and that's something that you should look forward to. Remember, you're not alone. It is easy to stagnate when you are alone, so surround yourself with people who will help you develop. That was it for uh, for today, guys, for, for this episode of the podcast. Um, I wanted to thank you for taking the time. I know it was a little bit of a longer one today, um, but it, it was something that, that I've kind of been stewing on for a little bit. And, and you know, I've uh, some of my close friends have had some, some tough times lately and um, they've been going through a lot. And I want to reach out to anybody that, that will, you know, that, that might need help or, or some guidance or some mentorship or whatever. Um, if, if you need anything, guys, First off, do not be afraid to reach out to me. You guys can email me at any time. I don't want to keep that hidden from you guys. My email is skeef at spencerkeef.com. So that's S as in Sam, K-E-I-F as in Frank, E at spencerkeef.com. Um, if you guys want to reach out to me, I have questions, concerns, comments, whatever it is about the show, please reach out. I love to hear from you guys. And if you guys have something where you just need some advice, tips, tricks, whatever, reach out to me and I'd love to respond and help you guys out. And lastly, guys, if you think that there's anybody out there that can benefit from this podcast, somebody that you think that might be struggling in life or somebody that might be uh, in need of this information or any previous episodes, please do not hesitate to share it out. I'm... I'm uh, we're, we're slowly building a community here, guys, and, and I'm hoping that um, you guys can change some lives by sharing some information that, that might be changing your lives as well. So please share with your friends. If you have a family member, even somebody that you think that might be going through some tough times, share the podcast. If you're if you're watching on YouTube, share the link to their Facebook page, um, you know, send it through text message, whatever. I'm just trying to spread a positive message. And, and the more people that we can get 
to see this community, uh, the, the more lives that we can change at one time. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for your time. Now, you know what time it is, guys. It is time to shift gears, go out there, and live the most positive, happy, and abundant life you can. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for your time.